Recently and probably for the last few hundred years, I don't know, there's been, been a, a great, you know, great thing that people think that Aqidah is something, okay, Aqidah is something that if you cover a course in Aqidah, if you, if you cover, you know, some, some books and some courses and go and, go and do some discourse whatever in Aqidah, then your Iman is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. It is true, however, there is a problem that has occurred in the last few hundred years with this whole concept of Aqidah. What is Aqidah? Aqidah is a set of dogma. It's a set of beliefs, our tenets, our faith, things that are to do with believing in Allah, believing in the Messenger, believing in the, the angels, believing in the books, believing in the Akhirah, believing in Qadr and so on. All these things related to all, the, all these things and you know, uh, staying away from deviancy, going towards the truth, how to become a proper Muslim, what kind of beliefs to have, what beliefs makes you a proper Muslim, what beliefs makes you a, you know, a, a Muslim that leaves the faith or a Muslim that is you know, on the verge of leaving the faith. All these things are good to study and we need to study them. But one mistake and one big problem that has happened with these Aqidah courses is they have become courses of knowledge but not of faith. Now let me repeat this, they become course of knowledge, so they give you like 10 things to believe about Allah, 7 things to believe about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 3 things to believe about your Iman, 4 things to believe here, and these become parts of knowledge, but what happens is your actual Iman doesn't increase, your Iman doesn't become weightier, why? Because you're not relating the Aqidah to real life. When the Quran, see in the whole Quran, you will find that Allah Azza wa Jal has talked about Iman. Okay? And when he talks about Iman, he links it with actions. It's a practical world where your knowledge and your aqidah and your beliefs in the real world, they join together and it turns into some practice, some form of practice. That is what real Iman should be. So what has happened with these courses? is that they will teach you all these things. For example, they will teach you, okay, you know, one of the things about Iman is that um, you depend on Allah Azza wa Jal. We depend on Allah, we do tawakkul on Allah. And, and they'll tell you a whole hour or half an hour about tawakkul. And they'll give you ayahs from the Quran. And they'll give you ahadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to explain what tawakkul is and how you depend on Allah. And it's beautiful to listen to all of that. But that is just the beginning part. What's supposed to happen is when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught about tawakkul and he taught about sabr, there was a real life going on where he made sure that they did their tawakkul and they depended on Allah in the crisis that they were in. That they showed their sabr and they showed their patience in the midst of the problem that they had. So it wasn't just knowledge, it was in a real life where all of these things were happening. Do you guys, do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? Right? So for example, they had the battle of Uhud. And the battle of Uhud, they, they, they had losses. They had a lot of losses. And at that moment, if you look in Surah Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran has the story of Uhud in it. So Surah Ali Imran, see the, the beautiful thing about it is that the, the seerah, if you study seerah, then you'll only study what happened at that point of the Prophet's life. Okay, so you study about seerah. You study about, you know, the, the battle of Uhud. So if you go into um, Surah um, Ali Imran, what you'll find is you'll find that Allah talks about what happened to the Sahaba when they left the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he got wounded and other Sahaba. You know, there's a whole battle. I'm not going to go through that. But what I want to say to you is the Quran, Subhanallah, when the Quran deals with it, it will give you everything in one go. It will throw to you a lot of things at one time. It's not just giving you a story. No way. If you look there, it, it, it is making you think. So for example, when he talks about battle of Uhud and the loss that they're making, just listen to this. Allah Azza wa Jal, he's talking about the story and he says, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ If you have, have faced um, a tragedy, 
in the battlefield and you trace you you face some some you you've been wounded then the other nation has also been wounded and we're going to we're going to exchange these days between yourselves like sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and then it says the reason why the tragedy happened is so that Allah can make it clear who the true believers are and so that he can take from you certain uh, martyrs he can create certain martyrs from among you and Allah doesn't like those who are cruel or who oppress and so that Allah can clear the hearts of the believers and, and you know he can deal with the, with, the, with the disbelievers in a certain way now all of this in surah number 3 ayah number 140 141 now what you can see is the story is being told but many reasons are being given those same reasons the believers are now taking in and thinking wow Allah wanted to test my iman Allah wanted to make me make my brother who died a shaheed. Allah wanted to make sure that he makes me understand that today I might win and tomorrow I might lose, but I shouldn't lose my iman. Okay? So there's many different lessons that are being be, been given. Then he talks about, for example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, the fact that, you know, some, some of them tried to flee from the battlefield uh, because they thought that he was, he was, you know, he had passed away in, in, in mid-battle. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, now look how, how he puts the ayah, because there's many things that are thrown at the believers to absorb and to take in. Allah says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad is no one but a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Many messengers have gone before him, meaning that he's a messenger, yes, but many messengers came before him and they also passed away, so he's going to pass away. أَفَإِنْ What about if he does pass away? أو قتلا what about if he becomes a shaheed and he becomes a martyr a martyr in قلبتم على عقابكم you're going to just turn on your on your heels and you're going to turn your backs on Islam because the prophet you know died in battle battle ومن ينقلب على عقبي well if you decide to turn your heels to turn turn back on your heels and turن away from from the deen فلن يضر الله شيئا such a person will never cause any harm to Allah never cause the least harm to Allah now look how much is being thrown that if something happens that is bad, are you going to now turn away because of the conflict that was there? Look how much, look, look at the Iman. The Iman is not just knowing that the Sira happened, no. The Iman is not knowing, look, the, the next part of the verse is, وَسَيَدْ زِلَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah will reward those who show gratitude. The Iman is not sitting in a lesson, sitting in a class and saying, oh, we've got to do shukr of Allah. We've got to, you know, thank Allah. That's Aqeedah. Aqeedah tells you to do shukr of Allah. Aqeedah tells you to believe in Allah. Sirah will tell you um, to, to know about the story of Uhud. Okay, there's two different departments. But the, the way Allah did the tarbiyah and he molded the Sahaba was with many different elements all around. Each of these verses came down and the verses told them how to act and how to behave. So if you look at the end of Ali Imran, the last verse, verse number 200, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you believe, Isbiru. Have patience. Sabiru. Tell others to be patient. Rabitu. You know, make your, tie yourselves to Iman. Make yourself strong. And have the awareness and the consciousness of Allah so that you may get to success. Now, Allah said what? After the entire story, after so many verses, Allah says, Ismiru. You know, have patience. You know, you lost. So what? Have patience, show patience now. So I want to say this to you brothers and sisters right now, and this includes obviously all of us, including me, that real sabr, real tawakkul, real something, you know, of aqidah that you learn cannot ever be a thing that is detached from my real life. And that is the problem that a lot of Muslims have, have faced. Because Muslims lead their lives, their aqidah is in books. The aqidah is somewhere in the knowledge of the brain, but it hasn't uh, been absorbed in the heart, and it hasn't manifested in the, in the limbs, and it hasn't become something that they're able to deal with with real life. So, and, and that is real iman, and that is what Allah Azza wa wants us to do. And that was the way that the Sahaba dealt 
with you know with iman and they became the individuals that they became if you're wondering today why 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 are muslims like like the way they are today and why are they so shallow because we've, we've separated all these departments so when it comes to my social life it's separate from my iman and the quran says your social life is not separate from your iman when it comes to my dealings and my mu'amalat and I'm dealing with money, I sometimes think, well, it's all right for me to quickly just do this deal. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's separate from me being a believer. And the moment you do that, what you're doing is you're, you're actually um, affecting your iman because iman is directly linked to all of this. The Safar curriculum covers all the Islamic educational needs of young Muslims today in a fun, simple and engaging way. Tried and tested for over 15 years at one of the UK's leading maktabs, the curriculum has been adopted by hundreds of institutions around the world and makes your child's journey in seeking knowledge easy, meaningful and dynamic. This innovative and comprehensive curriculum covers Quran and Tajweed, Islamic studies, du'as and surahs, as well as Arabic in an integrated and structured way. Visit safarpublications.org to find out more.